This is your weekend market recap for Saturday, October 15th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at EXP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your weekend market recap for Saturday, October 15th, 2022. Let's get into it. Rather interesting week, as most of you friends, followers, family. I mean, I consider everyone family who I talk to on the regular. It's not your friendly market. It's not a swing trading market, hence the struggle. I mean, I personally like to swing trade rather than day trade. And, you know, the admission is it's not the best. It hasn't been the best in ideal moments for such. And... Risk management, discipline is going to save you and prepare you for the next moves. So you got to be safe. That's all I warn people is just, uh, unfortunately, I'm not always around, just like you can't be if you are not a full-time trader. Even if you are, the you know admission of sitting around for six and a half hours a day trying to predict every single move, it's going to be tough. We're at these inflection points. <clears throat> We're at points of control. We're at a lot of different, I would de describe like, switch over like inflection points and you know a lot of things need to like show themselves next to really be sure of what is predominantly coming we'll make the case for both bears and bulls either way i ask strongly please be thoughtful be safe so we know going into next week you have earnings it starts as of right now economically looking at the uh there's not a ton of other than some housing data, other than that, not a ton. However, this is the earnings schedule. Be aware that you have some bigger names, a few big tech names. You got, you know, Netflix. You got some commodity names. You got Nucor. I don't know companies that are guided down. You got IBM again. We're just starting. This is, you know, there's like about four weeks of strong earnings, about equivalent of a month, where earnings is pretty much takes over <clears throat> be aware seasonally earnings is usually bullish i've always said this and i've said this and i've been right on this for many many almost feels like endless years when you're down into earnings <clears throat> just you see you see things go up and down you know and more up we'll see what happens i i personally think we just got to look through the charts and really observe the areas and go from there. <clears throat> so hopefully folks are just being safe. Bitcoin, things that you don't see if the market's about to break down, it's not breaking down. I anticipate Bitcoin to hold up until the, f the final flush, which I don't think anything will be safe. <clears throat> and I said this a lot, I don't think the feds are in a position to pivot just yet, right? Market's holding up, Market's not hitting the proverbial, you know, you know, blank hits the fan kind of moment. I don't think we're there yet. Hence the traps and the chop that I think are potentially coming. Bitcoin confirms it. Oil, this is another name. You know, we've been pretty good about spotting the spots, spotting the spots, spotting the spots on the leopard. Talked about 76 being support. Because it was old resistance, it held. Talked about the 193, sorry, not 103, 93 area. Now we're back testing some trend lines here on oil. I would watch the mid 80s. I said this and I'll say it again. Before, for me to anticipate the big market next, like dump or do, I think you need to see oil, gas, commodities pop some more. I could be completely wrong in this. And again, I mean, I love when people just say, well, you said this and this is what happened and you either you're the man you're the best or you were dead wrong well again in a probability game i reinforce this all the time you're trying to use the best probabilities and anticipations of what's coming and i've said this before for the if the if oil and gas commodities whatever pull back the market starts i'd say tabling out say 3500 on the spy or 3400 whatever it ends up being now the Fed's got some wiggle room, but if you're a real bear, which I mean, again, I'm I personally look bearish on the next major pop. 
you need to see this stuff go higher, just like it did in May and June before they almost capitulated that they get, they're going to have to push rates to put 75 basis points the next couple meetings, which they have are looking to be holding true, as we know. <clears throat> that would, to me, help bring the bear case. Because remember how they look at what happened in May and June. And we'll look at it in the spy. This is what got the feds going, oh, gosh. All right, we, we've got to really pump rates here. And that's how you're going to get the market to collapse in the economy. Because right now, GDP is negative 0.7%. Now, the wild cards are obviously the yen, Europe, what's going on, Europe, Ukraine. Down 30% this is what's hard about the markets is that, you know, they typically go higher after big down moves. But one of the things that you do know is end of the year, end of the quarter, sorry, end of the year tax law selling is coming. It's really in their best interest to hold this stuff up, at least for the next couple weeks into you know, a midterm election. Because again, I, I think the incumbents of charge don't want to be, own, they do not, don't want to be. No, they don't want to own a full out implosion of the markets and calls for, you know, what? Not just a recession, but a depression, right? Like, the, does this make sense? Nat Gas talked about what we like it here. I mean, you can see very clearly on the six level. Some people are trying to, you know, compare this to last year's action, what happened in October, popped, November fell. This is just a bigger version of it. I, I don't really see that. I see a higher high. That's a lower high. Ukraine wasn't involved. I mean, all these little things that you just got to, mm, you can't really compare the two. And that's why this is hard. Keep that in mind. Like, if you're listening to this video and you're sitting here going, I think this is going to happen with 100% certainty, and I think this is... No. Mm -mm. You, you got to take that belief of ego and I know, we know, I personally... Oh, Dan Dan will guide me correctly. That's all we try to do. So if you get frustrated by the action, sometimes it's better just not to play. <laughs> because again, if the, if the risk is not worth the reward, potentially, or you're unsure and it leaves you in a position where you don't sleep well, you don't feel well, you just don't know because there are a lot of variables, then either you trade extremes or you don't trade. And sometimes, you know what, and you wait, because sometimes that's the thing. It's, you know, as Livermore says, you know, the people who are over trading all the time paint the uh, road for the next clear move or the next potentials, right? The dollar, this is where, again, if you are a bear, you need to see the dollar continue to climb. You know, the yen's been getting absolutely hammered. It's acting like, um, acting like a meme stock up and down. <clears throat> big up or a uh, big down lately check this out the dollar we had this thursday action remember the market rallied off the low on the cpi dollar opened up closed lower what will happen bounce right back i don't know if anyone saw this headline but it looks like the feds gave a credit line to uh credit swiss of 10 billion dollars i mean this is this is how the start of the junk you know everything you know now Everyone's going to press on to someone else, and the Fed's going to have to do this to, I don't know, what's another big bank? UBS or, I don't know, some other foreign bank, you know? And again, there's a lot of these little ones. They used to be so much bigger. You know, Royal Bank of Scotland, I don't know, RBS. I mean, are they even still around? I Whatever, I don't pay attention to much European banking. But you guys get what I'm saying. The liquidity mechanisms... They're kind of stuck in a, in a hard place, right? They know if liquidity dries up. It's like uh, in the Livermore book where J.P. Morgan Chase had to bring money to the money pit to give people the ability to unfreeze the market. <clears throat> well, when the dollar spikes, the market is clearly showing it's freezing up. So this is where I'd be on red alert. Just You need to see higher highs. <clears throat> Bonds, we've said this a thousand times. Volatility in the bond market is what really pushes... I guess stocks lower essentially in my mind when I've noticed is again, because the market can handle bonds moving up and down slowly or in trends. They don't like this big wipeout. These are big moves. Remember, SPY and TLT look very similar in a sense of just year-to-day performance. Check the monthly. I mean, we're, we're coming into the big spots. Now, this is the thing. Could it be just a one-month touch? Could it be... The bottom, bottom, I don't know. 
But we knew we do know rates spiked in 2008 because again, when the, the the poop hits the fan, people aren't worried about making money. They're trying to preserve capital, so they might look to the federal, not federal government, but they'll look to bond market for you know safety. You're at some interesting areas on the longer term bonds. Now again, people will run into longer term bonds too when they're looking for safety, right? Makes sense. Just keep an eye on it. I mean, if you look at the daily, I mean, I see interesting potentials here of bottoming because you have volume and price action. You didn't make a new low on Friday, which I guess you can anticipate as it's a good thing. We'll see. The VIX. I think I was reading something and I've confirmed this many times. Like you've never seen a bear market bottom without the VIX, like hypothetically in the 40 to 50 range. The VIX, it's not really confirming the next down move. I said, I would not be surprised if we filled the gap. I'm starting to think now mid twenties might be an also downside move. You know, just the culmination of all the moving averages crossing. We'll see. This is hard because, again, if you want to see the market blow out, you need to get over. Again, we're like crash underway levels, but we're not crashing. You know, this we're just getting bigger intraday moves. So please be careful. Please be absolutely careful because, again, I you're going to see cases for both bulls and bears here. Because if, if I'm a bear, this is not what I want to see. I don't want to see the VIX not confirm the new lows. Like the S&P makes new lows. VIX should be breaking out. It's not. Remember, all the puts, nominally outstanding going into next week. Oof. Spy. Told you a big rip was coming. Now, it pulls back today, Friday, whatever. Back to support. I, I mean, I personally thought 360s would hold. I wasn't around for the afternoon. I'm assuming something happened in the sense of like rumors and things going on. Who's scared to hold into the weekend? Because again, I, we're either in this pattern right here or we're in this one. I think there's a bounce because we talked about like you get, you get the 80 point drop, you get the bounce, then you get the VIX. Remember the VIX peaked in June? Well, look what happened. You had the gap, 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 go. Like the absolute implosion of, I mean, bear market bliss or bear, you know, bear traders bliss. I don't think, I think we need to play a little more games. Now, maybe not. Watch the levels. I mean, we close right on levels that are important, which makes it hard, right? I don't know. We need more information. Then, you know, people are hitting me up. They're like, hey, did you see the 10-minute close? And it's like, yeah, let's look at it. You know, I mean, I don't know if I'd really call that bullish or bearish, but wide action on decent volume at a low, I don't know. I'm not really that that excited about it. But I could see people going, ah, it looks interesting. You go look at the monthly, right, on the S&P. You're sitting right at the 50-month. You're sitting at old channel, old channel highs, a whole like an old channel, and the 50-month. Do you see how I'm just, I'm just trying to paint the picture for evidence-wise, why this is not as clear as, again, because people troll me all the time, and I, I don't really care. I mean, they're like, oh, you were wrong, you were right, you're, the, you're an idiot, you're... You're great, Dan. And it's like, what? No, please. Just, I'm Dan. I'm just a guy trying to give you guys my best insights. This action, you don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, this is the hardest thing about trading. Everything is in a straight line move. I did a video on this about retest and chop and how it all works. People always just want to assume, ah! But keep on mind, this is usually, and I preface this, this kind of action, as we talked about in June, precedes the bottom right the the wipeout remember the straight line move you know this is not this is a bear trend right bear trend i think this is the thing though that i've said over and i've, I've said it for like two or three weeks and that's why i'm not surprised on the cpi day we rally back in everyone's bearish at the lows again like how often is the market going to reward retail if the goal is to take the most amount of money from the most amount of people wall street bets all short is a bad that, that doesn't seem like the right sentiment before the next wipeout because what this did up here is you know in may it gave everyone hope remember the commodity started rallying people thought things were going to be okay oh look the feds might not be so harsh 
because again, that's what we're going to talk about. Commodity driven next up move. Leaders lead. Tech, probably not. Not that tech can't pop, but it's going to lag. QQQ makes new lows, closes below the June lows. Doesn't look bullish, right? I'm just going to wrap through these quickly. You know, IWM. <clears throat> Wait, it's say at Leeds. This is, looks more bullish to me, right? It's not at the June and recent lows. So you see how this is so not as simple as, again, just throw dice and roll it and hope you hit your point. This is conflicting evidence in multiple areas that cues tech lagging feels very like 2000s again when i started trading i still remember 2003 2004 you would get days where the markets would be up and this nasdaq was just always down again money's not destroyed it rotates it's going into other sectors if you don't know what it is you better know talk about it. it's commodities it's coming into industrials it's going to be going into things that actually are not deflationary gold we talked about it being a fake, you know, not a fake, just a, a quick rally. I don't trust it, but now you're at the backside of the trend line that we have here. I've said this a billion times. Long term, love it. Near term, it's going to get choppy because I expect gold, personally, when the market wipes out, it's going to get wiped out too, but it could get choppy here. That's all I can say. You know, as soon as you get you get a point or two, you get some money, no point two, you, whatever you get, what you feel comfortable with, you're gone. Silver, everyone's like, ah, oh, long term, got to buy. I'm like, no, nah, it's not there yet. Again, I've said this multiple times, and I don't know if this will play out or not. The paper game could get wrecked. Silver, SLV, PSLV, or sorry, GLD. Some of these like ETFs that supposedly are holding gold and silver, they could get wrecked. I've always also said, if you really believe in a silver bull market, you just got to wait for the feds to pivot and you need the blowout. The best time to buy silver has always been when the feds pivot. I'll show you again on the monthly why. If not, you're going to be in purgatory. Now, again, I'm not saying you can't trade it. Like, let's, let's not talk that. But here you go. Here's the fed pivot in 2008. Zing. Here's the fed pivot on COVID. Zing. Everything else after that has just been a trader's market. So if you're expecting the big move, the big kahuna move, big kahuna, then you need the feds to pivot. Now, again, you can, if you want to trade this stuff, so be it. I bought some GDXJ, as you all know. I sold it near the highs, tried to rebuy, and then got when JNUG or GDX got back to the 20-day, popped. I just, you know, when it opened on Friday, I was like, I'm gone. I, gone. Then it closes back at the lows. And I was like, you better hold a 28. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Again, same thing with the miners. The best time is when the feds pivot. We're not at the fed pivot, so. No gap left behind. There is one. There it is. Do we get there next week? I don't know. This is where it's tough. I think, honestly, if the market acts like trash, and after we pop at some point, because again, I think there has to be a bull, a bear trap before the next bull. The, the, there needs to be a bear trap before the next bear move. The stuff is going to get, ab I mean, again, I, I just, some people are like, oh, I bought AG and I'm like focused all on metals and miners. I'm like, uh-uh, no, leave it alone. I don't even know how to just say it without saying it again. Now, again, like this seemed like an obvious pop. We talked about it. Channel low, break it, fake out, pop. You know, like we talk about fake outs, break, fake breakouts, just you know, capitulation moves, <clears throat> those become the easiest to trade, right? Like Friday or like Thursday CPI. Like if you watch any of my recaps or were around live, I'm like screaming by, <clears throat> like screaming by. Now you've got the trap. We're not really in trap zones with metals. You're kind of in between, you know, it's 50, 50. <clears throat> so if you want to play 50, 50, go ahead. AG, someone's talking about buying calls. I'm like, nah, I guess fill the gap. Maybe Need more information, AEM. This is one we love when it gets back to the right prices. <clears throat> Holding up. Filled the gap. Not filled the gap. Like this gap seems to be pretty important or around it near 40. Near 40. Closed at 40.12. Need more information. Sorry. I mean, I wish people, I wish I could tell you like definitely buy. No. This is where you have to learn in trading too. Like it's not always time. It's not always the time. Uh, Newmont complete trash i've said this leave it alone but just watching it doesn't really look bullish 
but it hasn't broken new lows. So it's tough to compare, compare and contrast and say, well, it's definitely going lower. Pass, same kind of thing. Let's move on to tech because this is where it all gets real interesting, right? Like tech has to bounce for the market to get a rally. It just has to at this point. AMD, we talked about this being a head and shoulders top. Goodbye. Like absolute goodbye. And not like a goodbye, but like goodbye. Now we filled this gap and we're all back all of this to 2020 levels. Man, this seems like a very ripe area to bounce. 2020 area. Does that make sense? Like we're literally back where we were two years ago, March 2020, for COVID. Will there be buyers down here? That is the ultimate question. You have to know and ask yourself. It's interesting because I... I draw trend lines and I draw stuff and I'm like looking at AMD and I'm I'm like, man, you were at the monthly trend line. And if we break this and it's hard to, and this is the thing I talk about, like the, when you come straight line up or down into a particular area, it's probably going to find resistance. The first touch, like you're going to want to see it then boom. Cause it's ran a long way. You talk about the rubber band man theory all the time of like, of, of just, amplitude and power of potential moves it's probably going to be getting tight pretty tired i mean this thing went from 103 down to 60 no sorry 54 pretty quick i mean that's a 50 percent move off of a 50 percent move right because what 168 down to 70 80 yeah i mean you drop 50 percent and then another 50 percent like do you see what i mean like there's probably a bounce is this what's going to happen here? Like you got into a support and then it turned into a green candle. Is this going to possibly turn into a green candle? I don't know. This is really hard, y'all. I mean, again, I just maybe the best thing I could say is just be careful. You're at the channel lows too. See this on the daily? Ten cuidado. NVIDIA, man, I'm pretty sure Kathy Wood is the reason why this thing is just trash at this point, but channel low. L channel low, not making new lows. We'll see what happens. SMH, hey, you know what? Come, I always get people like, oh, you didn't short this, but you were trading it. You should have nailed this. Well, high five to you for nailing it. You know, we 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 did short it. We have been long it. We've traded this thing, and here you go. Be aware. That looks like capitulation. Channel low, big green volume. May and June, even it did, you know hit channel low, bounced, chopped. Even went up a little bit. Now it's tight. 20 day. Where it broke down. Like 190. That would be like. That would be a great short area. <clears throat> That's what I'd be watching for. Apple. You need to see Apple below 130. And it's just not doing it. We bounce back. Closed at the point of control. <sighs> Same thing in May. Went from. 132 up to 152. Could you get 20 points from 134 to 154? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it lines up with the point of control. I mean, remember, this doesn't, not stuff isn't always random. Remember, the computers are running this game. That could happen. But again, you need to break lows. I mean, technically, you just have to confirm stuff. Adobe talked about selling this, selling puts in the 275 area when it was dumping. It's not breaking new lows. Amazon got got hit pretty hard on Friday, <clears throat> but still, it's not below the June lows. I don't know. Again, if you're a bear, you're on red alert. If you're on a bull, you got to be looking for extremes and learn how to like stop out if you're wrong. CRM we talked about once it just sloppy choppy. Not interested. Google, not interested. <clears throat> but again, it due to bounce. You know, like, again, the laggards are lagging. Leave them alone. Like, Meta, a lagger. We've talked about this lagging. But it's at channel lows again. This is where it gets real, real, you know, AMD clearly laggard. Some of the, like, NVIDIA. Channel lows. Could it just pop back to the 20-day? I don't know, man. If you're short this stuff, you got to be super careful. Microsoft, a laggard. But channel lows, again, broke below it. Pops up to the 20 day, comes back and didn't didn't lose it all. NDAQ. Man, this one bothers me because I should be short this. Talk about shorting it up here. Wait said, I'll wait a day. And then it professionally gapped and was like, eh, we'll just give it some time. I was hoping it was like a, a chop. 
Like you get more of a bounce. You got nothing. <laughs> Closing at now the primary trend line. Decent volume. Oh, man. Yeah. May have missed this one. Just is what it is. Micro strategy. Doesn't look terrible, man. It just doesn't look terrible. This is stock should be like if Bitcoin and the market's about to open the you know gates of hell, this thing needs to be just absolutely getting throttled. It's not. Again, things that just bearish, bullish, whatever. Netflix, down two points. Look at this, way above the most recent point of control at the 100-day. <clears throat> and right here, high volume highs and lows love to retest and become swing points. It's holding up. Telling me the market's about to implode and this stuff doesn't look that bad. Now, some things look worse than others and some things look okay. Not full, you know, we're not getting the full, like, Monty of, capitulation uh roblox made a higher high and a higher low I, eh. tesla now again i've been short this thing and i i told you folks that i am i'm staying short on this because elon's selling he ain't buying well then i'm not not covering my shorts i mean i've i've said this this thing was the poster child for insanity of up moves it's going to become the poster channel poster child of moves lower that don't make sense <clears throat> now this one could confirm the next to move lower, right? Sorry, my trend lines from older got are still drawn, but they don't change when the stock splits. Like this thing has. Do y'all see this? Like it needs to break 205. Now I got longer term stuff on this. And again, I have a, enough that I don't need to trade it. Like not a big position, not a like all in. So I don't really worry about it. But that ain't bullish. But also too, we've seen... We have seen the bottom look red and then turn around, right? Seen it look red and then turn around. We've seen it look green and then turn around. Not easy. Let's get into commodities. This is where it gets interesting. Like This is where if the market is going to break down, <clears throat> these names need to start capitulating. Letter X, I don't know. I've said this a thousand times. This thing is in a longer term channel trading range. <laughs> If you want to buy it long term, you got to wait for the capitulation. But you can trade it up. <clears throat> New core coming into earnings next week. Doesn't look terrible. We saw this pattern and then continue higher. <sighs> oh, man. Congestion. Allergy season for me. Tough. Very tough. I would probably wait till after earnings. If you, if you already own it, I don't know what to tell you. Valet. You know, emerging market name. All these names I love long term, but I just you can't buy them now. Arrow have been acting strong. <sighs> Breaks out of this little channel, comes back in it. Could be toppy, but I'd watch the two hundred day. That's I mean literally. CCJ, everybody's favorite. Takes over Westinghouse, gaps down, makes it lower low. I've said this a million times. I thought this was gonna be a sixteen to eighteen dollar stock at some point. Ugh, now I feel even more confident about that. Maybe even lower. Because if the market pukes, none of these are safe. But the thing that I want people to see is like they look better. Like They're not at the June lows. They're not farther from their, uh, their highs than their lows. Like CF. I mean, we talked about buying this. It got stopped out, bought in, stopped out, made money, sold money. I mean, <laughs> trading this thing. It's almost been too confusing in the sense of what is the appropriate amount of leverage to go in on this i mean for me i'm like it looks way better you know it's not near the june low and if you look lower left upper right that looks like a bold trend right well now what i would say personally the big red doesn't have me that scared because you saw that here right remember we've seen this before talked about in may and june big red it could pop up. If you do that pop, look what it did. From ninety to a buck ten. Ninety to a buck ten. <clears throat> What's twenty points from ninety six or seven, wherever bottom? Fills the gap. We'll see. I mean you got I mean I, I I've been trying to trade this one the best I can. Yesterday's move definitely hard i mean i think i told people like i sold at the open <clears throat> i was like man if it breaks the 50 day done 
Then tried to start buying back by the 20 day. <laughs> Close below that. Got stopped out. <clears throat> Lost a point and a half, two points. And then started rebuying around 98. 99 area. You know, just trying to like middle this little gap. Then it closed at 98. And I was just like, you know what? I have enough leverage that I'm comfortable holding this overnight. So I did. Overnight mean over the weekend. Mosaic. Back at the trend line. We'll see. Because again, if the market is about to totally get annihilated, then these things are going to get destroyed. Keep that in mind. NTR. We haven't been trading this one. But again, I mean, I'm putting this on my list of names that are uh, interesting to me for the long term. Let me see where we are. What was it? These, yep, yeah, these candles. I mean, I guess we're into the zone. Into the zone, auto zone. Um, yeah, it doesn't look as good as say CF or some of the other names. This is the hard thing. Again, if if the market is gonna go, just please. I know I've said I like commodities long term, but also I've said trade them. But also you have to be aware if the market pulls the rug, your favorite name is not safe. I don't give a crap what you think it is and how great the stock is or how awesome it is. It doesn't matter. They will pull the rug out from underneath all of it. That's why I've always said, like, if you like certain names, look for them. Look for them. Let's get into a few of the, like, the other little things that we pay attention to, like XBI. It's not breaking the lows. Even the lows from September, it's tough to be bearish, right? Financials. I mean, it really, look at this gap up. It doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look that bad, does it? Morgan Stanley, now they had their earnings. Doesn't look that good, but not breaking the lows. Stupid JP Morgan. Look at this. Look at this. Pops up. Closes near the low, but not, not. We'll see. I mean, again, like, could this be a professional gap and it continue to rally? <laughs> Maybe up in the 120s? I don't know, man. I'm trying to warn y'all. Like, there's a lot of hard things here because if the market's about to break down, this is going to have to turn right back. This is going to go right back to the low. Solar names, right? Your favorite solar name for solar. Ugh. Not making new lows. I'm telling you, if you see 137, you 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 short. You look for the short. Uh, it's not making new lows. It's hard. Sedge, this one has been a dog. Not surprised that it's been beaten off of the highs. Big channel range. I mean, this is no, this looks like AMD to me. Like you get down to a support range in a straight line, like you're probably gonna bounce. Just some. You want to see it if you're a bear. I know that's not. You don't understand. Maybe you don't understand that, or you don't want to believe that. But the bigger the move, like here, you come down to the bottom of the channel, pop, and then boom. You come down and just boom, like you, you just can't always go in a straight line unless you think it's the end of the world, end of the move. If you want to trade it, then you trade it. In a trader's market, that's a bear market. Trader's market to the last leg. And the last leg meaning implosion. Here you go. I mean, it's holding this little gapper approximately. We'll see. I mean, ENPH, I mean, TAN, I tried to buy calls and this got stopped out. At the bottom of the range. I, this is tough. This is tough. I'm just trying to be honest with people. A lot of people are like, oh, tell me exactly what to do. And I'm like, sometimes the best thing to do is not to do anything or just be small, right? Uh, I don't know, man. It's so hard. It is so, so, so hard. We'll see. I love solar on a sh solar short on any pop. And I mean any pop. Like, give it. I mean, I was praying Tan got up to, like, 70s maybe even 80s <sighs> but here's the thing with solar if oil and gas hold up like we talked about in the may move let's because let's get into oil and gas because so this is what i'm talking about may move the may move that led to the june swoon market pop wasn't that great we see it right see it Shh. look what uh oil and gas did right Oil and gas really didn't quit. It was in a nice trend, pulled back, and then went to the blow off into June. Coming off the bottom, small pullback. Are we ready to go? 
I mean, again, I, I don't know the exact highs. I mean, I could project. Let's let's try to project if you'd like, if you're you're around and you want to see what we're thinking. Oh geez. Oh geez. No, don't no, that's not the not the not the porn website. No, I'm just kidding. Jokes, I make jokes. Lot, lots of jokes. This guy's so funny. <clears throat> if you had a guess. Hmm. If that's zero, then that's the fib. I would think maybe back to 100. Really piss people off. 105? I don't know. I don't know. Which would probably take you in the USO back into the 80s. Mid-low 80s. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm trying to sound like a broken record for a purpose. Like, if this is the case, right? Here. Natural gas dropped, held in May, and then went up into June. Are we basing? I mean, this is my biggest play. And I'm again, I'm ready to toss it back into the, the ether or back into the ocean, like catch and release a fish that's just too small. Not, you know, you're wrong. Whatever. Not a keeper. Not a keeper. I mean, it's pretty simple. Watch that gas around the sixes, low sixes, UNG holding down here. XOP took a took a little dive on Friday, confirming maybe bears, but is it? And it's just retesting the area. Choppiness. I mean, the king of chop, <clears throat> chop, chop, chop. Could it be this kind of chop, this kind of chop, and then drop? I don't know. I've said this for a while that cash flow and you know all these oil names are doing well, but they were going to drop when the market drops. Well, here's what it did in May, in June, right? <clears throat> went from 123 up to 170-something. Does this not look better than tech? I mean, but is this the move? I, that's the hard part. Is it over? Or is it consolidating? Like, that's what you got to ask yourself. Because here's, like, again, where you had a, a two-legged move, right? Pull back the... You know? Pull back the... I mean, I, I highly doubt it. I could be wrong that this is end, done. Uh, Exxon Mobil, <clears throat> down two dollars and change. Yeah, not, not great, but pretty high and tight in my opinion. Not, not turning over. Not below Friday's low. And I mean, look at the action. This is what's so hard about the action is if you're like a bear and you're looking at this, you're like, this isn't bearish. Like Exxon Mobil opened at the lows on Thursday with the CPI closed back up near the highs. Then on Friday, it's just inside day. Not easy. EQT, love this one. Tried to I mean, sold at the open. And then what? Tried to buy back around 42. Close at 41.13. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. But I mean, y'all see it? You could probably draw it and see it better on like the 10 minute. But that should be your next point of control. Oil and gas are going higher. This stuff should go higher. If you have any questions, again, reach out. If you'd like to get involved, I will drop links to people during... Uh, not during, who direct message me. Again, this this room isn't just some, hey, t ask Dan. He's going to tell me exactly what to do and always be right. No, the goal is to teach you how to see the market for what it is through a probability-based lens and own your results. And along the way, I appreciate the love, support, the donations. Because again, I mean, you, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. If you want good help, Get involved. Be willing to spend time on yourself. If you think this is easy, then go back and look through the 2008, maybe 1974, 2001. I'm trying to think of like <clears throat> similar situations where rates had to move either quickly or as a tech wreck or inflation. But, you know, rates move quickly, inflation-based recession and or tech wreck. So this is why it feels like 1974, 2001, 2008 combined. The difference now is I don't see at least American banking, the housing market, I don't see it as a big threat. The biggest threat is right now is inflation, right? Inflation actually is inflationary. That's the thing, right? Cost to borrow goes up. Cost to borrow goes up. That's not deflationary. Talked about this with folks, uh, you know, if you're buying a $500,000 loan or, you know, have a $500,000 loan at 3%, your mortgage is, I think it was like 17, 1800 bucks. Well, at 7%, it's $3,400. Not good. 
not good. That's inflationary. That's hard to borrow and afford that kind of loan. Hence, if you are looking at doing real estate, which I am screaming you should be, because again, at worst, you refinance or if people aren't buying, the rents are going higher. Now, rents could stabilize out, but think about the discounts you're getting. Like People are always like, oh, it's such a hard market to buy when it's a seller's market. Well, now it's turning into a buyer's market, and this is when you want to buy. Now, I'm not saying going out there and just throw around a bunch of offers and be silly. Really scout. Do your homework. You know, it's like scouting out a stock. Like, wait for a certain level. Like, if you like, for example, certain parts of Denver, Central Park, where I live, if a four-bedroom, four-bath house, <clears throat> single-family house, townhouse, or even, like, um, paired home, pops up in the upper fives to mid five range, I'm buying it all day and I'm not even think twice about it because I know the long-term demographics of the area. So, and maybe that's what you're going through. You're looking at areas and you go, well, for example, I'm you know born and raised in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And it's like, if you know your market and you're looking at prices and you're like, all right, this area is great. Like I, I want to be near North Hills or I want to be near Crabtree or I want to be inside the Beltline. And you know how the prices have always sustained they don't really drop a ton because the areas are always in demand, but now you're getting pullbacks. Well, what do you think is going to happen when things go back to normal? I mean, not even normal, just, you know, regular economics. You know, you're not in a bear market. Remember, bear, bear markets don't last very long, 12 to 18 months on average. I mean, you're looking at next year, maybe the following year after that, you buy a, hypothetically, you buy a place that was at one point rolled up to 500000 pulls back to 400 and then five years from now it's 600 i mean are you really going to be that mad if you buy a house and you don't have to sell it like again fix and flip folks i would not advise that in a high interest rate environment the buy and rent folks and i say this again if people aren't buying houses and it's you and i are the only ones buying people still need a place to live what are they doing they're renting keep that in mind Uh, sorry for the rant it's just a weekend rant but i think it's always important because i think a lot of people get focused on you know, the, oh, I, you know, only want to buy houses when everyone else wants to buy houses. What? Well, if I'm talking to the group of folks that I think are like listening to this kind of stuff who understand trading, it's no different than looking at your favorite stock pulling back in an uptrend. Because remember, housing always goes higher in time. How fast? Well, that always depends. But if the Fed pivots and they start pushing rates back down again and inflation continues as it always does because they have to pick their battle. Well, then house prices will rise. Real assets. Keep it simple. Talk to you later. And I appreciate y'all. Please don't be hard on yourself. You can be hard on me. I don't care. Talk all the junk you want. I, you know, but I, I'm, I've internalized this. I understand how this works. Just, just be safe. Be thoughtful. Be smart. Whatever you do, make sure you save enough. You know, keep your capital preserved so that when the next bull market comes, you're there. Talk to you later. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.